Dusty Glugor election petition case management on 14th January. Prosecution requests ex Intel Chiefs CBT case transferred to High Court. Good afternoon, I'm Carlos, and thanks for watching News on 2. The Georgetown Election Court in Pulau Pinang yesterday set 14th January for case management of the election petition, challenging the results of the contest for the Tasi Glugor parliamentary seat in the 14th general election filed by Deputy Foreign Minister Dato Marzuki Yahya. A senior assistant registrar, Mohamed Rezwan Saleh, fixed the date after the Election Commission, EC, produced Form 14 to be handed over to the lawyers representing the petitioner and respondents during case management. That was held in chambers. The EC's Form 14 is a document that confirms the votes the election candidates received at each polling station. Lawyer Mohamed Hanif Katri Abdullah, representing Dr. Marzuki, said that no recounting of the votes took place yesterday. Instead, the EC submitted to both parties the relevant forms pertaining to the contest for the Tasi Glugor seat in G14. <laughs> On 12 June last year, Dato Marzuki filed an election petition demanding a by-election be held for the Tasi Glugor parliamentary seat and recounting of the 689 spoiled votes and 297 unreturned postal votes. The prosecution team in the case of former intelligence head Hassana Abdul Hamid is seeking to move her 50 million ringgit criminal breach of trust trial to the Kuala Lumpur High Court. And Deputy Public Prosecutor Iskandar Ahmad informed the Sessions Court of this when Hassanah's case came up for case mentioned today. Now, Sessions Court Judge Rosina Ayub said 21st February for next mention, pending the transfer application of the case in order the prosecution to surrender all trial documents to Dato Hassanah's lawyers, Shaharuddin Ali and Cairo Lazam Abdulaziz before the next mention. Now, the prosecution has already surrendered Dato Hassanah's appointment letter as Director General to seizure list, invoices, photographic evidence, recorded conversations, and photographs of the Research Division Office. Now, Dato Hassanah claimed trial to allegedly misappropriating 50 million ringgit in government funds in October last year. And she was accused of misappropriating the funds with which she was entrusted at the Prime Minister's Department between 30th April and 9th May. If found guilty, she faces a fine and a jail sentence of between 2 and 20 years. She posted 500,000 ringgit bail for her charge. Well, criminals, beware. The country's first facial recognition camera system to detect and track down criminals on the streets is now up and running. Now, many of the 767 CCTV cameras on Pulau Pinang are now equipped with the facial recognition technology featuring artificial intelligence, AI by IBM. Upon detecting a face resembling those on the police wanted list, the high-definition imaging captured by the cameras and seen at the 24-hour CCTV control room in Comta will instantly alert the police. The Central Command Center, CCC, at the Pulau Pinang Police Headquarters will then send its officers to check out the suspect at the scene. The camera will track the suspect on the move until the police arrive. During the launch held in the Comta building, Pulau Pinang Police Chief Dato Sri A. Thai Vegan assured the public that there will not be an issue of privacy infringement. The database is secured by the police, he said, adding that the faces are only of those in the wanted list in Pulau Pinang, which is about 1,100 of them. If the cameras capture someone committing a crime on the street, Dr. Sri Thai Vegan said it will input the suspect's face into the system for search and tracking purposes. The system will aid police personnel on the ground to recognize faces of those wanted. The Glans on Fire and Rescue Department JBPM has reminded the public to be alert of the red flag warning and take precautions during the occurrences of huge waves and turbulent sea along the state's coastline. Its director, Nazali Mahmoud, said members of the public should promptly follow the red flag instruction not to swim in the sea in view of the expected occurrence of a tropical cyclone. Jangan sesekali 
untuk uh, berada di pinggir pantai ataupun menjalankan apa-apa aktiviti dalam masa dua hari ini bagi tujuan untuk mengelak daripada perkara yang tidak diingini berlaku. Nazli also said he had instructed that the fire and rescue stations near the beach areas including the ones in Kotabaru, Bachok, Pengkalan Kubor and Pasir Pute to be prepared and be present at strategic locations in the face of any eventuality. Based on their observation, the public still heed the red flag warning sign placed at the respective locations. The Clans on Fire and Rescue Department director further noted that the state has 762 firemen and 653 volunteers who can be immediately mobilized any time in the event of a disaster. Well, a total of 1,453 people were issued warning letters, while 3,879 others were given advice following the enforcement of non-smoking at eateries since the start of the year. Now, Health Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad said 611 enforcement personnel from the ministry visited 2,786 eateries, including 24-hour outlets. Dato Sri Dr. Zulkifli said a majority of those issued warning letters and advice pleaded ignorance about the ban. InsyaAllah akan kami update dan kemas kini ya, berpandukan kepada feedback, maklum balas yang kita terima akan beberapa tempat awam lain yang mungkin saja akan kita senaraikan sebagai tempat awam yang perlu bebas uh, rokok dan The health minister further noted that he was satisfied with the support and positive momentum showed by the people including non-governmental organizations towards the ban which was aimed at ensuring all food premises in the country were smoke free well, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has stressed that there is no provision which exempts anyone from the rule of law. Well, he said the rule of law applies to everyone from the rulers to the Prime Minister and ministers to the civil servants and ordinary citizens. Elaborating further, Tun Dr. Mahathir said the rules, there is a special court by the laws, are the same as the laws applicable to ordinary citizens, and they too must respect the laws. He also expressed his concern to see blatant breaches of the law being perpetrated in the mistaken belief that immunity has somehow been accorded. The Premier further noted that the public complaints against those who abuse the rule of law are legitimate and do not breach any law, and neither should they be construed as sedition. He said this in his end on his blog, chitdet.cc, last night. Tun Dr. Mahathir also pointed out that the basic law of Malaysia is the constitution and it is a comprehensive body of laws which determines the legal structure of Malaysia from the young Libertuan Agong to the rulers of the states to the federal and state governments and the bodies empowered to rule and enforce. Now coming up next, government to propose best mechanism to deal with highway toll. And the news continues. Now, the Works Ministry will appoint an independent consultant this month to review and propose for the best mechanism to deal with highway tolls in the country. Its minister, Barobian, said the move is to prove that the Pakatan Harapan government is committed in fulfilling the promise made in the 14th general election manifesto. Speaking on a talk show, Bichara Politikonomi, on RTM yesterday, Baru said the review will also include submitting proposals to reduce short-term, medium and long-term toll rates. He added that the result of the review will be tabled for consideration and approval of the cabinet in June. Sebagai bukti bahawa uh, kerjaan uh, serius mm. mengenai uh, uh, manifesto ini ialah uh, pada tarik satu bulan Januari yang lalu ya. ini kan hmm. kita sudah uh, memastukan uh, untuk tol motosikal ya. tiga tempat satu di Jabatan Pulau Pinang mm -hmm. uh, keduanya Jabatan Kedua Pulau Pinang dan ketiganya dengan uh, link kedua Malaysia dan Singapura mm -hmm. Baru said that the move will only be able to be implemented once the country's financial status is more stable, as stated by Finance Minister Lim Guaneng. Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia Bersatu Deputy President Dato Sri Mukherjee Tun Mahathir has expressed his full support 
for Angkatan Bersatu Anak Muda, Armada's head, Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman, who dared to criticize on the issue of awarding contracts. He said the discussion on the giving of contracts openly was not proper and, in fact, perceived to be breaching the integrity and aspiration of the party. Apa ni? Saya menyokong penuh penyataan armada mengenai pentingnya kita mempertahankan integriti uh, di dalam uh, pentadbiran parti. Uh, jadi apa ni? Saya rasa memang tidak tepat uh, dan sesuai bagi mana-mana kepimpinan parti uh, mencadangkan bahawa kita menggunakan kedudukan kita dalam kerajaan ni untuk tujuan memberi kontrak dan sebagainya kepada ketua-ketua bahagian. Datuk Seri Mukhriz said this at the ceremony to hand over the letters of appointment to trainees of the Future Leaders Program 2019 in Alo Star, Kedah. Previously, Syed Sadiq, when delivering his adjournment speech at the second Bersatu Annual General Assembly in Putrajaya recently, criticized the delegates so that they would not discuss the issue on the giving of contracts generally which appeared to be able to jeopardize the party. Well, emphasis should be given to the aspect of character development at the early stages of schooling rather than focusing solely on academic improvement. And Negri Sambilan Investment, Industrialization, Entrepreneurship, Education and Human Capital Action Committee Chairman Dr. Mohamed Rafi Abdul Malik said the abolition of midterm and final year exams for standard one, two and three students will help in achieving the target. According to Dr. Mohamed Rafi, the national education system needs a balance that emphasizes the development of students from all aspects and this cannot be achieved with an exam-oriented system. Walaupun tidak ada peperiksaan, tetapi pihak sekolah akan menilai ya, sebab sekarang ini kita tidak mahu membebankan pelajar di peringkat awal dengan penuh berorientasikan kepada peperiksaan ataupun akademik semata-mata. Dr. Mohamed Rafi said this when met by the media in Surambang. Well, corporate companies are called to execute their corporate social responsibility or CSR, especially in the aspect of education. And Joho Housing and Urban Development Exco member Zulkifli Ahmad said this will ensure that the welfare of students who are underprivileged. Zul Kifli said this will also provide opportunity for students to study in a comfortable environment. He said this when officiating the back-to-school program organized by the port of Tanjung Pelepas Sendirian Berhad at Iskanda Putri in Johor. At the event, 270 underprivileged students at the Iskanda Putri area received school supplies. The Youth and Sports Ministry will continue to look after the welfare of athletes from the Malaysian Triathlon Association or TRIAM and Malaysian Ice Skating Association ISAM, although the two bodies have been suspended by the Sports Commissioner OSC. Its Minister Syed Sadiq Abdul Rahman stressed that the athletes would receive appropriate support to make sure they could compete in any local or overseas competitions. Now, the SE was reported to have suspended the two associations for failing to submit their annual reports for several years. Inside Sadiq said the ministry will help the athletes and as for the two associations, he has left it to the SC to decide. Now, he said the SC will make the best judgment to ensure the problems can be resolved as quickly as possible, but the ministry's commitment towards the athletes will continue. The minister said this after visiting the National Hockey Stadium in Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur yesterday. Syed Sadiq further revealed that athletes from the two associations had met him and asked him to intervene in the matter. Into sports, now men's doubles shuttler Goh V. Shem has brushed aside suggestions that he and partner Tan Wee Kyung quit the national team to escape the immense scrutiny and criticism by the Badminton Association of Malaysia, or BAM. Now, Vishem29 said they just felt it's time for them to leave and concentrate fully to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. 
This comes after several shuttlers under BAM have been earmarked to qualify for the Olympics by coaching director Wong Chunhan. Vishem added that after winning the silver medal at the Rio Olympics in 2016, he remained hopeful of getting a 100,000 ringgit sponsorship per season. So far, I have been here for 16 years. If I'm not wrong, so I'm already in the age of 30. So Dua tahun ini pun tak berapa bagus lah result saya. So mungkin ada pressure, ada ada berbagai lah. So uh, BM pun ada kata dia more focus on 21, under 21. So kita pun tanah ganggu banyak lah. So kita jadi independent player. So sama juga lah dua-dua tempat boleh naik lah. Yeah. Vishem was met yesterday after representing Pataling BC in the men's doubles at the ongoing SS Purple League for the 2018-19 season. Vishem and Wee Kyung have been subjected to harsh criticism of late due to their below-par performances and they were also issued a four-month ultimatum until April to buck up. The Rio Olympic silver medalists are expected to enter the Thailand Masters schedule to begin 8th January. The means news on to in our top story Tasik Lugor election petition case management on 14th January. Right, do join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Amin Carlos. Thanks for watching. And if it's not too late, we all wish you compliments of the season and a very happy new year.